2024 is almost upon us, and after next year, the NHL is going to look completely different. But going through the trade deadline, the NHL draft, the NHL offseason, and the start of next season, which big NHL players will end up being dealt? Well, make sure you watch till the end as we go through all the trade numbers and all the predictions to see what's next. And hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey content and trade content just like this. Now, before we get into the big trades that could happen over the next year, let's first talk about today's sponsor in Underdog Fantasy. My favorite and soon to be your favorite place to play daily fantasy sports. Now, going on to my picks for tonight's games, I first have Alex Dabrinkit higher than 0.5 assists. He's been rolling recently, and I think he's going to continue that. Same thing with Nathan McKinnon, but this time higher than 0.5 goals. He has been a man on a mission, and versus Arizona, I think he's going to absolutely dominate. And then you got Gabriel Velarde higher than 0.5 goals. He has been unreal since he returned from injury. Now in that first line with Shifley and Ehlers, they have been absolutely lethal. And I think he's going to get a goal tonight as well. And guys, when you join me on Underdog Fantasy, you'll get a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. Plus, Underdog will give you a free pick to pair with any other player. Underdog, of course, is operational in 30 plus U.S. states, including California, Texas, and Florida, and multiple Canadian provinces. So what are you waiting for? Join me on Underdog Fantasy and help make watching NHL hockey even more fun. And thank you to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring today's video. Today, folks, we're going to go through 14 different players that I think will be traded in 2024. And the big thing here is that it's all of 2024. It's not just the trade deadline, not just the draft for the offseason. It's also the start of next season as well. So the entire calendar year, these are the guys who I think will get dealt. And let's start off here with a team that I think will be massive sellers throughout the entire year of 2024. And that will be the Calgary Flames. First, starting off with Elias Lindholm, who is going to be their big trade piece at 29 years old, a pending free agent. It just makes all the sense in the world for the Calgary Flames to trade him. And he's still at a pretty solid level. Maybe not what we saw in 2022, but I think if he goes to a contender that has a great score on the wing, Lindholm could be a great complimentary center. We see this year, eight goals, 15 assists, 23 points in 34 games. He's gotten still at a decent level of Calgary, but maybe not the best level in the world. But I think with Lindholm, he's probably going to leave in free agency. I think the Calgary Flames might as well trade for him while they can get some pretty big value. Likely a first, a top prospect, maybe even a player back as well. Now let's go on to another player that could be dealt by the Flames at this year's trade deadline, and it's Christopher Tanev, who is going to be also another big trade piece. And in the defensive side is probably the best option that any team could have. Even at 34 years old, he is still at an amazing level. And you can see this year, obviously the offense isn't what you're going to be bringing him on for. But seven points in 31 games for the player that he is ain't too bad. But the way he's able to block shots, get inside physically, trap players in the defensive zone. Tanev would be an excellent defense defenseman addition for any NHL team. And especially as a rental, there's very little, little risk here. He can play on the bottom pair. He can play on a top pair. He's very versatile in that way. And I think a lot of teams are going to be all over. Now let's go on to the third Calgary Flame on this list, but this is a big one. I don't think this player will be traded at the deadline, but in the offseason, in fact, and that'll be Dylan Dubé, who I think is pretty much out of Calgary, out the door already. I mean, it feels like he feels like he's out the door already because this year has just kind of been embarrassing for him. After having a 45-point season in 2023, he's down to seven points, just three goals in 33 games. And he seems pretty checked out. To me, with Dubé, it just feels like he needs a change of scenery. We know the speed and the talent level that he has as a pretty, probably solid middle six guy. But I just don't know if he's going to be able to continue with that with Calgary. And I think especially in the offseason, he's pretty much gone. But considering, again, what he was able to do just a year ago, I think a lot of teams will be after him for that speed and youth combo that he could bring to a middle six. Next up, let's go on to another Pacific Division team here with a couple of really interesting trade options. First, we got Anthony Duclair of the San Jose Sharks, who I think is a pretty solid rental for any team right now, especially considering what he was able to do in the Florida, with the Florida Panthers playoff run last year, 11 points in 20 games. Looked pretty solid there offensively. And this year with San Jose, he's had some really big moments. 13 points in 30 games, 7 goals. He's looked pretty solid offensively, especially over the last month and a half. But I think Duclair could be a really interesting, maybe third line scoring power play option for a team as a nice little middle six rental piece. Not going to get too much back for San Jose, but still a decent back. Now, we know that Duclair could fit on both sides of the wing, so I'm just saying, maybe a team like the New York Rangers, a former team of Duclairs, wants to add something on that top six. I think it could be really interesting there. 
But now let's go to the second San Jose Shark on this list. And next up, I have Mario Ferraro, who finds himself in a unique position, especially considering the youth and the term he has. He makes 3.25 for the next two seasons after this. And considering he turns 26 just before next season, I think that youth could be really interesting for a lot of teams. You can see this year, nine points in 34 games. He has had to play so many minutes over the past few years with San Jose. But I think in a more limited puck moving role, I think Ferraro could find some really big usefulness with a contending team. I think a lot of teams will be after him. If he doesn't get dealt at the trade deadline, I could easily see an offseason trade. I mean, my favorite team, the Dallas Stars, I could see a fit there. Now let's go on to another Pacific team here in the Seattle Kraken who could make a lot of different trades over the next little bit. But the big one that I see happening is a move on from Adam Larson. Now, he makes $4 million for this year and next, so he wouldn't be a rental if anybody were to trade for him this deadline, but we've already heard a lot about him. Now, he has a 12-team no-trade list for this year and next, so even though it does limit the playing field, I don't think it'll limit it completely, especially considering Larson and the situation he's in, where he's not too old and he's in a position physically where he can still bring it. This year with Seattle, he's put up nine points in 35 games, but you were able to see last year a career high in points, 33 games in 82 games, or uh, 33 points in 82 games there. And I think of Larson, even though he's a more defensive player, I think he could also go to a more contending team, especially if he were to get maybe a more limited role, maybe on a middle pair. I could see Larson getting back to the amazing level he was at last year and years before that as well with Larson though we know the value that is there though we'll see if Seattle actually gives up on him because he is one of the players that has an A on his sweater so we'll see if they're comfortable giving up a leader like that but I could see Seattle making a lot of changes or doing absolutely nothing they're in a really weird spot I think maybe this offseason could show a lot of what this future for Seattle is made of but now let's go to the arrows and the coyotes and actually the only goaltender on this list well, let's go to carol vegemelka who is in a weird position considering his age contract wise he makes 2.725 for the next year after this one but considering his situation i think he's kind of in a weird spot we've seen last year how he was able to put up a pretty solid season with arizona considering a situation with a 900 save percentage this year, the save percentage is better, but I also think he's been out, outplayed by a large margin by Connor Ingram. And we'll see what Arizona's plan is after this. He's 27, then he's going to be turning 28 this offseason. So he's not going to be an extremely young goaltender by any means. And I can see Arizona kind of capitalizing on the value that's here, hoping for other teams to try to see the magic beans. Especially considering the term, I could easily see an offseason trade, maybe even Carolina making sense. If we want to see a trade deadline deal, I can maybe see something like that happen. Now let's go to the Nashville Predators, and they have a few interesting options. I think there will be one of these younger players on the team, though, dealt over the next little bit. To me, one of the ones that I think will end up being dealt in the next year will be Cody Glass. I think Cody Glass is going to be traded in 2024, and there's a few reasons why. It's unfortunate because I think after last year, we were all kind of hoping to see him continue after that kind of breakout year where he got 35 points in 72 games. But this year plainly has been a disaster for him. 14 games, a goal, an assist, two points. He has just been dreadful for Nashville and has really weighed them down offensively. But I think at 24, being 25 this April, I think Nashville is going to want to move on, move a younger piece for potentially a better middle six option now. I think Nashville could be in the position of this deadline and the offseason to massively improve. I think Glass will probably be out the door. Next up, now let's go on to the Columbus Blue Jackets. And there is a lot of options on Columbus. But to me, the biggest by far is going to be Patrick Line. It really just does not feel like Line A wants to be in Columbus, that Columbus wants Line A. It just feels like a bad match in the first place. And you can see what he's been able to do over the past year. It's just hovering around a point per game. This year, though, nine points in 18 games. He's suffered some health setbacks. He's had, of course, a, a bunch of benching and a healthy scratch and everything. It's just been an absolute disaster. And I think Columbus is going to want to move on. Patrick Laine does have a 10-team no-trade list, and he makes 8.7 for the next two seasons after this. But I think for Columbus, they're just going to want out of this type of player. And considering the direction they're trying to head in, I think Columbus is just going to part ways with Laine in the end. Probably more in the offseason, but we'll see. Now let's go to another Metro team here, next up in the Philadelphia Flyers. And this one as well is a much more of a de of a of an off-season deal, I would say. And that is Rasmus Ristolainen. Now, it's actually pretty interesting because he's actually played well for Philadelphia over the last couple of years. 
in 2023 i think we really saw his defensive game actually get to a pretty good level and then this last year in the games he's played he's been pretty great now he has suffered some health issues of course but with Ristolina defensively he's playing the best hockey of his career under john tortorella and i think philadelphia will try to maximize on that on the on the hype on the potential there and try to get him while his value is at its highest We've already seen some rumors about Toronto being interested in Ristolainen, but I think this is more of an off-season deal where we see Ristolainen actually get a pretty decent package back for Philly, and I think they should get it while they can. Next up, let's go on to the Montreal Canadiens and go on to the Atlantic Division teams. And for 2024, I have Jordan Harris. Now, there's a couple other options that could be dealt, but honestly, Jordan Harris might be, in my opinion, the most likely guy to be dealt. We have a pretty big log jam here defensively with Montreal. I think there could be some guys on the outside looking in, especially with the prospects that Montreal has coming up as well. I think Jordan Harris is going to be on the outside of that. I think he will end up being dealt. You can see this year he's played 16 games, has had three assists, just has not had a good year by any means. And I think now he's kind of boxed himself out of Montreal's long-term plans. I think next offseason, maybe even during the season next year, we could see Harris dealt maybe for a forward back. Next up, let's go to the Ottawa Senators, another team that has a lot of options here. I'm going to go first up to Vladimir Tarasenko, who, of course, is just making $5 million for this year. It was just a one-year deal. You can see in 27 games, 20 points. He's been solid for Ottawa. And I think Tarasenko is going to want out by the trade deadline with how my, uh, Ottawa is trending right now. Tarasenko does have a no-trade clause, but, of course, he could waiver that at any time. And I think he ultimately will. Maybe New York reacquires him in a trade or something funky like that. I think a lot of teams will be after Tarasenko like they were just last year. Now, we're not done with Ottawa just yet. Going on the defensive side here, I'm going to have Eric Brandstrom. And it's unfortunate because I really want to see Brandstrom work in Ottawa, but it just doesn't feel like it's going to happen, man. He's 24 years old. And even though he's gotten a decent amount of games this year, I think Ottawa is going to ultimately just move away with him and try to go for a bigger, more sturdy defensive core. We'll see if that actually ends up working in the end. But I think especially with Brandstrom, maybe we see him as a trade deadline deal, but probably more likely an off-season trade. And now, going on to the last player on this list who will be traded in 2024. This is a player that I could see at the deadline, maybe in the off-season, but I think will be dealt in this next year. I have Nick Robertson of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, to me, Robertson is another pro uh, kind of on the teetering on the line of prospect and NHL player. I think what we saw just a month ago was pretty solid with him. Nine points in 20 games, and he's looked solid in the games he has played in the NHL this year. And I think he's a player that if you were to see a Chris Tanev deal, would absolutely be going the other way. We'll see what, uh, what Toronto actually does this deadline. I think Robertson, if they're going to go after a big rental piece, especially on defense, will be the guy that gets moved. It just makes too much sense. But those are my 14 players that I think will be dealt over the next year in 2024. And these aren't all of them. These are just some of the most notable names, in my opinion, that could be dealt in 2024. But let us know in the comments down below. What did you guys agree with on my list? What did you guys disagree with? And who are the big players that you see being dealt in the 2024 year? Let us know all your thoughts down below. Of course, make sure you share the video for all the hockey fans you guys know online. And hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell if you guys enjoyed. And share the video for all the hockey fans you guys know online. Get the trade content out to them. And click on this card for all my trade content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great day. And goodbye.